Hello, my chicklets, and thank you for stopping by. For the next few weeks, I'm going to be reading stories from Alice Ruth Moore, specifically her collection of Violets and Other Tales. I want to open up this series with the introduction from the book. In this day, when the world is fairly teeming with books, good books, books written with a motive, books in calculating morals, books teaching lessons, it seems almost a piece of presumption too great for endurance to foist another upon the market. There is scarcely room in the literary world for amateurs and maiden efforts. The very worthiest are sometimes poorly repaid for their best efforts, yet another one is offered the public. A maiden effort, a little thing with absolutely nothing to commend it, that seeks to do nothing more than amuse. Many of these sketches and verses have appeared in print before, in newspapers, in a magazine or two, many are seeing the light of day for the first time. If, perchance, this collection of idle thoughts may serve to while away an hour or two, or lift for a brief space the load of care from someone's mind, their purpose has been served. The author is satisfied. This is a sentiment I share. Thank you all for being here, for listening to my stories and the fact that they are able to bring you some kind of enjoyment and entertainment leaves me satisfied in writing them. I appreciate all of you. For now, let's go ahead and read Violets. And she tied a bunch of violets with a tress of her pretty brown hair. She sat in the yellow glow of the lamplight, softly humming these words. It was Easter evening, and the newly risen spring world was slowly sinking to a gentle, rosy, opulent slumber, sweetly tired of the joy which had pervaded it all day. From the dawn of the perfect morn, it had arisen, stretched out its arms in glorious happiness to greet the Savior and said its hallelujahs, merrily trilling out carols of bird, an organ and flower song. But the evening had come, and rest. There was a letter laying on the table. It read, Dear, I send you this little bunch of flowers as my Easter token. Perhaps you may not be able to read their meaning, so I'll tell you. Violets, you know, are my favorite flowers. Dear, little human-faced things, they seem always as if about to whisper a love word. And then, they signify that thought which passes always between you and me. The orange blossoms, you know their meaning. The little pinks are the flowers you love. The evergreen leaf is the symbol of the endurance of our affection. The tube roses I put in, because once when you kissed and pressed me close in your arms, I had a bunch of tube roses on my bosom, and the heavy fragrance of their crushed loveliness has always lived in my memory. The violets and pinks are from a bunch I wore today, and when kneeling at the altar during communion, I did sin, dear, when I thought of you. The two roses and orange blossoms I wore Friday night. You always wished for a lock of my hair, so I'll tie these flowers with them. But there, it is not stable enough. Let me wrap them with a bit of ribbon, pale blue, from that little dress I wore last winter to the dance, when we had such a long, sweet talk in the forgotten nook. You always loved that dress. It fell in such soft ruffles away from the throat and bosom you called your little forget-me-not that night. I laid the flowers away for a while in our favorite book, Byron, just at the poem we loved best, and now I send them to you. Keep them always in remembrance of me, and if aught should occur to separate us, press these flowers to your lips, and I will be with you in spirit, permeating your heart with unutterable love and happiness. It is Easter again. As of old, the joyous bells clang out the glad news of the resurrection, the giddy, dancing sunbeams laugh righteously in field and street. Birds carol their sweet twittering everywhere, and the heavy perfume of flower scents the golden atmosphere with inspiring fragrance. One long golden sunbeam steals silently into the white-curtained window of a quiet room, and lay athwart a sleeping face, cold, pale, still its fair young face pressed against the satin-lined casket, slender white fingers idle now. They that had never known rest locked softly over a bunch of violets. Violets and two roses in her soft brown hair. Violets in the bosom of her long white gown. 
violets and tuberoses, and orange blossoms banked everywhere until the air was filled with the ascending souls of the human flowers. Some whispered that a broken heart had ceased to flutter in that still, young form, and that it was a mercy for the soul to ascend on the slender sunbeam. Today, she kneels at the throne of heaven, where one year ago she had communed at an earthly altar. Far away in a distant city, a man carelessly looking among some papers turned over a faded bunch of flowers tied with a blue ribbon and a lock of hair. He paused meditatively a while, then turning to the regal-looking woman lounging before the fire, he asked, "'Wife, did you ever send me these?' She raised her great black eyes to his with a gesture of ineffable disdain and replied languidly, "'You know very well I can't bear flowers. How could I ever send such sentimental trash to anyone? Throw them into the fire.' And the Easter bells chimed a solemn requiem as the flames slowly licked up the faded violets. Was it merely fancy on the wife's part, or did the husband really sigh a long, quivering breath of remembrance? Thank you all for listening. Again, this story was Violets by Alice Ruth Moore from the book Violets and Other Tales. I do hope you all enjoyed it, and I hope you have a wonderful day.